what we want to do today is talk about Google and talk about the text ads. So what are text ads? And I think all of us know what they are because we've probably seen them before. Maybe we might have even created some ads. And what we'll do is cover some top level understandings first, and then we'll actually go into a text ad and, and create one. And we'll take the, the, remember the session runs about an hour and a half. So we'll break at the top of the hour or so, or 10 minutes too, and then we'll come back and jump on an ad. So what are Google text ads? Well, the important stuff is that it's very targeting, targeted, and it should be compelling, compelling text in order for you to do something. That's the idea of an, of an ad. Remember, we want to create a call to action and, and create you to take action on something. So it's important to have a, an ad in combination with SEO, uh, organic stuff that we do. You really won't be successful if you just do one, regardless of how good you are at organic uh, SEO, you do need to have some text ads. That's why even if you have a small budget, I would recommend spending $100 a month, $200 a month, whatever you could afford, you should do it on text ads because it's going to help you with your ranking and positioning. In most cases, that text ad is the first point of contact that someone would see with your brand. So remember, if the user's out there looking for something and we're the marketer and we have something to offer, the only thing that's in between us is the content, right? And in this case, the content is the ad because ad is considered content too. So that user now becomes aware of who you are. It's just like everything else. I've been in marketing now. I can't, I can't believe it myself over 30, 35 years now. And when I started, we used things like magazines, if you remember what those things are, a newspaper, of course, TV, radio, all that stuff still applies today. Now we've got Alexa devices and things like that, that we can market on. So that first point of contact brings that consumer into the awareness funnel. Remember, you have to, that, you have, to have that consumer be, uh, know that you're there and become aware of you. So this is where the text ads come into play. And it really helps get that, that user from the ad to the website and get that landing page going. And you need to make it relevant and powerful. So just remember that people are always searching for something and your text ad has to populate up in those results. In simple form is you want to be where your consumer is looking and the text ads will help you do that. So when you think about a text ad, you have to think of these three main elements. There's a headline, there's a description, and then there's a URL, display URL. So headlines will be that, that attention grabber, right? Something that's gonna make us turn our heads or stop scrolling and, and look at what's going on. And we'll talk about how we could define that a little bit. Descriptions will give us a little more detail, not too much craziness, but enough detail for us to understand what you're trying to sell, what you're trying to help us solve with that problem, how you can solve the problem and what you have to offer, what, what we need. And the display URL is where I'm going once I click on that ad. So basically it's not much different than a, a regular ad that you might put in a magazine. You need a headline, you need some type of copy and you need some type of call to action, a place where you want them to go to. And that's what that URL will do. So let's talk about the headline here for a moment. The headline's pretty, pretty obvious. It's the blue, uh, blue text when you see an ad. And you know it's an ad because it'll say ad on the, on the, uh, on the little text copy. And, you know, I, I've, I've talked to a lot of marketers about this and even consumers, and maybe we can take an opinion poll as well. Some of us don't click on ads. We know that just like some of us don't like commercials on TV or, or, you know, we skip through the, 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 uh, the previews of a movie or something like that. That's okay. That's all right. We, you know, we know that as marketers, we understand that, but those that stay, we have to be able to get their attention and the way to get their attention will be that headline, right? So that headline is really the, the two required fields at a minimum 
and we'll we'll pull one out. And there's also optional stuff. Now you have a character limitation here that you have to keep keep aware of. And the text, obviously, as you see here, pair next to each other. And normally you separate that, or you see it separated by what we call a vertical pipe. That's that long, looks like a long line there. And sometimes it wraps around, depending upon the screen size, to a second, a second screen, let's say. Now, if you're if you're building this out, you really shouldn't do that. You should try to keep it short and sweet, and that will help. So you see this type of ad, it's pretty neat and I like it because save time and money. Who doesn't want to save time and money, right? That's a that's a pretty good call to action right there. And then, of course, the description and the call out extensions are here at the bottom. And we'll go through some of that. So that headline text is, is really used to uh, promote and supplement all your existing offers and calls to action. So you may want to make sure you're uh, including more value propositions than you could with the 95 uh, character limit because you have more time. So be a little more exacting and a little more direct and make that call to action strong. So when someone sees it, they, they stop and they pay attention. So let's talk about structuring here on the headline. I think you always want to include the most important messaging in the headlines for two reasons. Number one, we do not have a lot of time. When I say we, I say most people these days, right? We're a very quick looking, quick acting group of individuals. So we see an ad, we either in or out, or we don't even see it. Sometimes we just go right by it. So that messaging is important. So you really have to provide that call to action. Think of it as a showstopper. It has to stop someone from scrolling. It has to stop someone from moving around. And you should be able to answer someone's question there. So let's say I'm looking for a pair of red shoes for whatever reason. And I'm looking for red shoes. So I go online and I say, I, I, where can I buy red shoes? Well, if I sold red shoes, my ad should say, buy any size of red shoes, or we have all the red shoes you can need, or red shoes on sale, or red shoes from top designers, something like that, right? It'll key into red shoes. And it'll, once I see the ad, I'll say, oh, that Professor Ken's shoe store has red shoes, and let me click through it and see it. So there are some individuals who are looking for quick answers and the people that are looking for quick answers, if you have that in the headline, that's all they need to go. They understand. I think everybody understands now that there's ads out there. In the past, um, when, when we started getting used to the internet and search terms and all that stuff, people would say, oh my God, that's an ad. Oh, I'm not going to click on that. And, and they would be all ad crazy. I think that's changed now. I think now we are all comfortable with seeing the ads, just like we're comfortable now with seeing commercials on our streaming TV, right? If you remember, streaming TV didn't have commercials. And then all of a sudden now we have stream TVs that, that have commercials and we've all gotten used to it. So we've gotten used to the ads as well. So we click on them if they're answering our problem. So let's talk about that description. And the description is the supporting lines that you see under the URL and under the headline. Generally speaking, well, factually speaking, you have 90 characters. That's your, that's your limit. Um, generally speaking, you really want to make sure you're putting enough in there to capture someone's attention and to explain what you're doing. So you could do things like um, branding awareness, let's say. So branding awareness is good. Maybe offers are good. In this case, if you see this ad, get a free quote. They do a little branding. Number one national long service company near you. Notice they use near you, near you, because that's a part of the search terms. People are going to say, um, where can I get lawn service near me, near you, that type of thing. 
So that's all part of that as well. Okay. Um, I would say you can use it for a lot of things. I like putting a little story there. That's what I like to do. So I, I write like a one sentence type story. I don't use short uh, call outs like, like you see here, which is a bunch of different call outs. That's good too, I guess, if you want to do something like that. But I like to, to tell a little story there in one sentence, two separate stories, one in one sentence, one in the other, because I like to give it a little more dimension. So my headline will get their attention. My description will tell a little story on how I'm going to solve the problem, why I think I'll solve the problem, why you need to click through this ad, all that stuff. And I think that's important. And you really want to take advantage of those description fields to be able to, to do something creative there. Um, you don't want to say, I mean, I guess you can say, you know, been in business for 150 years. You could do that too. That's telling a story. But you want to also tell how you can solve a problem there maybe. So give that some consideration. The next part is the URL displayed. So what is that? That's what you're seeing there. That's in green in this particular ad. That's where you're going with the URL. So it's displaying the URL. It's not really an active link because we're putting what we call path there. And I'll explain that here in a minute. But it's, it's really giving you an idea where you're heading when you click on it. So in this particular case, you see you're looking at the dot com forward slash lawn care forward slash near me. So that's telling me when I click on that, I am getting something that's near me that's in lawn care. My problem was I need someone to take care of my lawn and I need it close by. And so this is solving my problem, lawn care near me. How much further can you solve a problem by clicking on that, right? That's really answering it. So that's what you want to do. You want them to know that where they're heading is where they need to be. That's, that's really the idea there. So it shouldn't be like a long drawn out thing. In fact, you can't when you build path and I'll, I'll show you that here in a moment, but you want it to be more direct, more exacting. So someone knows, oh, okay, I need to get long care near me. This is where I wanna go, click, click, and they're in, right? That's the idea there. So in that URL, we talked about path fields. So a path field is really that forward slash that I shared with you. So if you go back to that, that long care near me here, that, those are the path fields. So it's defining where you're ending up. So it's going to help increase your click-through rate. And that's where a consumer is gonna say, well, okay, I need, I need someone to take care of my lawn. I need them near me. So let me click through because they're answering and solving my problem. Generally speaking, you want that message to match the keywords of the search query. So in that particular case, they, were, they looked up lawn care near me and they got that ad, right? Perfect match. They're optional. You don't have to do that. I would definitely always recommend you do it because it really gives more um, context to what you're trying to do. And it really helps the consumer understand where they're going. So definitely do that. It doesn't cost you any more money to do it. So why wouldn't you, if it's going to help increase your conversion and you do have a limit to 15 characters and you have to make sure that you're linking through to the right domain, which takes me to a very valuable discussion here. Remember, if our goal is to drive traffic to a certain point, we should understand some things before we even begin the ad and begin to think about driving traffic. Before you even start the ad, you want to have a goal in mind. What do you want them to do? And you see, when we get into creating an ad, Google will ask you what your goal is. So before you start an ad, you have to have an ad goal in mind. What do you want to do? Do you want to send people to your website? Do you want to get more sales leads? What is the opportunity? Okay. Now, my goal here is to send more people to the website. Okay, great. Where do you want to send them? What is the URL you're sending them to? 
I can tell you if you do it generically and you send someone to a home page, your conversion rate will not be that good because you get to a home page and you get lost. You want to create an ad that's going to specifically drive them to a certain point on your website. If it's a landing page that you know you need to collect some data and email or something like that for a bonus or a free gift or whatever it is you're giving away to get that conversion, that's good. But stay away from general pages. Stay away from the home page or the contact us or wherever it is that you want to send them. Make it very specific. So remember the difference between a website and a landing page is a landing page is a singular page that is that's created with a call to action for high conversions. You could have a landing page on your website. So it's your.com forward slash landing page. And that landing page could be anything, or you can build a separate landing page completely different. That's, that's up to you. So those path fields help identify where you're going, what page you're going to, and that sort of helps the user say, okay, I really do want to go there. And that's why you want to use that. And you want to be specific in the page you drive that person to. So if we look at that, this is a really good example of a display path URL. So the .com here is marketing360. And the domain is marketing360.com. But the path that they're sending them to is Dr. Marketing, forward slash doctor, forward slash marketing. And it says here, Marketing 360 for doctors, the number one marketing platform. And that's a registered trademark, right? And then underneath that, it says, everything you need to grow your doctor's office, fuel your brands. And again, they put a registered trademark there. I'm not crazy about that registered trademark there. I mean, it, some say it helps, some say it doesn't. I, it doesn't add anything for me. I don't care if it's a registered marketing platform or not. And then the deal, 100% off marketing CRM, code free CRM. So that's pretty cool the way they do that, right? But if you notice, they're taking you right to doctor marketing. So there's no if, ends, or buts there. They're using these path fields to tell you exactly where you're going. So if you are a doctor and you need marketing, guess where you're going? You're going to doctor marketing, right? Pretty simple. And I think this is a really good example of how they use that. So these paths fields automatically will pull the domain for what you're displaying from your, your URL that you put there. And you could add these, these up to 15 characters to really give it some length. I wouldn't put 15 in there. I'd probably keep it short and sweet like we just saw that example of doctors forward slash marketing. They use two, but they only use doctor in one and marketing in the other. That's good. I like that. So you want to keep it short and sweet and really tell someone what they're doing and why they're going there. So if we understand why we use the path fields, why is it good that we use the path field? What benefits do we have? Besides the fact that it drives more interest and it's almost like a another call to action another word that we're promoting right if you get clever with that you can actually use it almost as another headline so if i see that it's reassuring me as a searcher that it's going to take me to a specific landing page that's tied into my interest now the landing page is not going to be that path field so if i was doing selling red shoes, let's say it's Professor Ken shoestore.com forward slash red shoes forward slash on sale. So the domain, the URL that you might go to might be Professor Ken's shoes.com forward slash red shoes forward slash collection forward slash on sale or collection forward slash red shoes forward slash on sale. So it gets a little lengthier but you're not seeing that in the path field. You're only seeing what we put in. So we're cutting out a lot of that. It's also going to boost your, your CTR, uh, your click-through rate and your conversion rate because 
more people will understand what it's all about. Remember, we have to include that top key alert, keyword there. So think about that and have that list ready to go before you even start creating your ads, which is a best practice too. If I had to share with you a, a best practice is you really want to have that keyword list available to you before you even begin to construct an ad. You should really construct an ad before you even open up Google ads to put the ad in. So you should go even a step further than that. Your first ad will be a little rough because you got to get through it all and it's going to take time to get results. You have to uh, pull results in. Remember that circular pattern of marketing. You have to have a goal, have to have a strategy. You have to execute, you have to measure and come back to see what you're doing again. So don't expect results your first ad. Don't expect results possibly your second ad. I would probably expect results 30 to 45 days after your first ad. And then you could start getting some data and you could start making the ads better. That's sort of the idea there. Um, I share a story about that, um, an actual story just in the, in the middle. Well, I don't know if it's the middle pandemic. We don't know when it's ending yet. But it was in 2020, the fall of 2020, right? So about a year ago or so. And um, business was growing very fast because everyone had to jump online. And if you weren't online, you had to figure out a way to get online and sell product. So someone, one of my, uh, one of my classmates, my schoolmates introduced me to someone that they knew that had a pretty robust business. It was almost like a warehouse business for um, kitchen um, what's the word I'm looking for, like kitchen sinks and bathroom um, toilets and tubs and things like that. You know, some, all those big things that you can't ship by UPS. So um, he wanted to, no one was obviously going out to buy these things and construction stopped. And his, he was one of those type of businesses that he was in business for 15 years, but it stopped just like a lot of other people's businesses did because no one was shopping for those things. So he wanted to do some online promotion, online advertising, which I, 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 that's what I, he was engaging me for. So we had, I had an interview conversation with him. I normally, my process is I'll, I'll meet someone, I'll have a 30 minute conversation and they'll get to know me, I get to know them. I ask a couple of qualifying questions. Um, and then if we get to the second discussion, then we spend an hour and we talk through some of the strategy, the ideas, and start. I start penciling out what I think I could do to help them and give them the, the price and the quote and all that stuff. So our second discussion was going well. And then as we get ready, as I get ready to close them, and um, I asked him, well, what is your budget? He said to me, well, I want to give you $5,000 a month to spend. I said, okay, good. I said, well, tell me about your past ads. What type of past ads have you done and how much have you spent and where can I find the information on your past ads? And he goes, well, I've never advertised on Google before. So immediately I knew that that doesn't matter how much he gave me. If he gave me $5,000 or $5, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work as quickly as he wanted it to. And then he went on to say, if I give you $5,000, can you give me $25,000 in revenue? I said, well, that's not unlikely, but it's probably not likely the first 60, 90 days. And um, I gave him the bunch of the reasons why. And, and at the end of the, the call, I, I told him, I said, listen, I want your business, but I'm not going to take it and tell you I'm going to give you $25,000 worth of revenue on $5,000 spend, especially since you didn't advertise ever before. So you have no history. You have no understanding of what your target market is. You have no understanding of what's going to sell. You can't give me a list of your top sellers online because you've never done it before. So my proposal to him was give me $500 and give me six months to figure it out. And of course, he didn't like that idea. So he went on to, um, we didn't work together. And I remember he was introduced to me by a friend, a schoolmate of mine. And he went on to do his own thing. He actually found someone to spend his $5,000. And he spent $15,000 in three months. By the end of the year, he generated $1,000 in sales. So I could have done that for him and I could have taken the money and run. But my point of the story is this. It's, it's not 
it's not it's not the amount of money you spend. You could spend if you let's talk about the Super Bowl ads, you can spend fifty million dollars on the Super Bowl ad, right? But you'll get 60 million eyeballs, but that doesn't mean those 60 million eyeballs are the right audience and they're going to spend money. So it's really more of brand awareness. It's really more about patting yourself on the back. Hey, I, I spent money on the Super Bowl ad. I feel really good. I'm an important brand, but if you don't convert, it doesn't matter how much you spend, right? We're in this for conversion. We're not in this for spending money. I'll be happy to spend anybody's money but I'm not gonna be responsible for spending someone's money irresponsibly. So just keep that in mind when you do these ads. It's not gonna happen overnight, it's a, it's a process. And you have to, you're looking to improve your, your click-through rates and you're looking to improve your performance and it takes some time to figure that out, okay? So I hope that story helps. Sure, thanks, Sean, I appreciate that. But it's, that's what happens out there. Unfortunately, we're in the business where we have, um, we have companies that will say, oh, yeah, give me the $5,000, we'll spend it, and I get 20% of it, so they make $1,000, but they generate zero sales, so uh, that happens quite often. So remember, the, the next piece of this is the dedicated landing page, and I always explain this like, like this. Way back when, I have a few years on me, but way back when, and I grew up in New York, there used to be these things called um, underground parties and you couldn't get to one unless you got like a secret invitation. And it wasn't just one secret invitation. You had to get a secret invitation to get the secret invitation to get the real invitation. So it was almost like a, like one of those, um, you got to find these things, right? And you didn't know where the place was going until you, until you get there. Right, but you had to go through one, through two, and then finally the third invitation, and that was that was pretty aggravating, especially if you wanted to go, you wanted to go out and, and uh, you know enjoy the city life, so to speak. You may get the first invitation, but never get the second one, and never find out where you're heading. Well, that's sort of what this is. You don't want to make it a mystery <laughs> of where you're going to. You want someone to know where they're going and why they're landing on there. So give them a dedicated landing page. Don't take them to the home page. Don't take them to the, the shopping page that has 55,000 items on it. You want, them to take, you want to take them to a very specific page. They're, they're, you should be happy that they clicked on your ad, but now they clicked on your ad and now you gotta close them, right? So think of it like this. If you walked into a retail store, um, Let's say you walk into a Walmart, for those of us that have been into a Walmart or shop Walmart, I think just about everybody has. But if you go into a Walmart, I mean, they're one of the largest retailers out on planet Earth, right? Uh, now they're not, but Amazon is, of course, but just physical locations, let's say. So you walk in there and it's 100,000 square feet. They have 35 aisles with 24 cashiers. It's pretty big. If you don't know what you're looking for, you could spend the whole day walking around that place and, and not find what you're looking for. So if you know the, exactly the aisle you're going to, you're in, you're out, you have to wait online. Walmart always has horrible lines to get out of, but that's the way it works. So that's why you want to send someone to a specific page and make sure that page is optimized and designed to sell. Let's make it easy for them to spend their money. If somebody wants to spend their money, don't make it so complicated for them to spend it. And uh, the only story I can share with you there, because uh, I've, I've been in sales just as long as I've been in marketing, I've done, let's call it the business development piece. And I've trained a bunch of salespeople. And, and the hardest thing to do when you're a salesperson is to close the deal and stop when you sold. Don't keep talking about the features and the benefits. If someone says, here, I'll take it. Then write the order up, take the credit card and move on. So that's what you have to think about here. Close the deal, get them on the page, convert two clicks from the ad, they should be out and they should be spending their money. If you can't do that and figure out a way to do that, you really wanna make it optimized. Okay, so now we wanna create this compelling copy. What are we, what are we gonna do? Well, remember, Everyone, everyone moves on emotion. Everyone wants to get something from what they're buying. So some ideas, 
when you create these ad copies, create an aspirational type promise. What benefits? Remember we talked about feature and benefit selling. This is a feature of my product. Here's the benefit you get from buying that, that product. What problem am I solving? Create value. What makes you unique? Is it free shipping? Are you award-winning? Do you have a special promotion and exclusive, something along those lines? That call to action, make it specific. I want you to do something. I want you to make a purchase. I want you to order, browse, download, call, sign up, get a quote. Something has to happen. That's what I want you to do. I want you to take some action. I don't want you to just move on with life. I want to stop your, your thinking in the middle of what you're thinking and take some action. Remember the keywords, we always have to include at least one keyword here and the headline is preferable. And let's make sure that we know that because Google will pull up those ads to make sure it's relevant. And brands are important. If you have a powerful brand, right? If you're, if you're um, a Nike, an American Airlines, a Walmart, whatever it may be, a, a a Yeti, that type of thing. Your brand is important. Everybody knows your brand, but it could take 20, 25 years to build up that what we call brand equity and brand following. If you're just Professor Ken's shoe store, yeah, I have a few people that know me. That's okay. A few is not what I need, though. I need millions of people to know me to build my business. So it it's not as valuable. Professor Ken's shoe store is not as valuable as uh, red shoes on sale, let's say, right? Or, or the best red shoes at a discount. That's a little more attractive than saying Professor Ken's red shoe store, only because no one knows Professor Ken's red shoe store. Now, I could build brand awareness ads, and that's good too. You should have some brand awareness out there, but it's going to take you years to build brand awareness. We want immediate conversion or as quick as quick conversion as we can get. So it has to be what someone's looking for. There's not a lot of people out there looking for Professor Ken's shoe store right now, but they may be looking for red shoes on sale, right? That's the idea. The next part would be ad extensions. So ad extensions are sort of the, the, the little extra things that we see at the bottom of the descriptions. And they're, they're free to add. Again, this, this doesn't cost you extra money, so you should have it. It's going to improve your quality score. And you'll see here, quality score is basically the quality of the ad. Google will rate your ad and it'll show you that. It's pretty pretty intuitive there. It'll give you an idea of what your quality score is based on what you're looking for, how you wrote it, and, and the, the optimized keywords and things of that nature. The extensions help increase your ad exposure and decrease your cost per click because if your extensions are correct, and um, conversion able, if somebody reads the extensions and they don't like what they see in the extensions, they won't click through, which is good. You don't want them there if they're not going to make a purchase. You don't want to spend that 50 cents on them or that $5 on that click. That's okay. So that's why your extensions could be important to you. It does increase your click through rate. So if you do write them well, if people are interested, if you do make the sale, if you do have that compelling ad copy on the extensions, they will click through. So it's a positive click and even a negative click because they won't click through and spend money, which is good. It allows you to show more information, give extra incentive to click. And Google has a like almost like a rotating type of selection there. So they're going to select the best extensions and um, they'll use the extensions that will be important. So you have to put extensions there that are relevant to your, to your business. So when Google takes a look at these and they rank them, that's when they'll show them. So the ranking is a combination of a bunch of different things. It's the combination of the bid, the quality of the ad, the, the landing page after the click, the ad rank thresholds, the context of the search, the impact of the extensions. Then we look at ad position. Your ad will be in a certain position based on the results you get with the first opportunity to show the extension. So the higher you are up in the ranking, the more extensions will show. And the lower you are, the less extensions you would show. So Google works through all that. 
I haven't run into a case where it doesn't get shown a lot. Normally, if you pick the right keywords, you pick the right targets, you should be able to get your extension shown too. But it's it's not a it's not um, it, it doesn't happen uh, automatically. That's what I'm trying to say. So what do you add in these extensions? You include site link, um, locations, affiliates, call, maybe an automated um, automated number. You can do message and automated messages. If you're doing an app, you could do that. You can create these dynamic call outs and these call outs on specific um, features and benefits. You can create structured snippets and pricing, promotion, even seller ratings. So, Extensions could include a lot of these. You don't get all of them all the time. You don't need all of them all the time. I'll show you a couple ones that I think are valuable that, that could be used on a regular basis when we create the ad. Remember that everything we do is now on mobile, right? So when we create ads, we have to think about that mobile optimization. So I don't know how often this happens, but I do know it does happen. The search for something on a mobile device could be different than the search on desktop. In fact, depending upon your geographic location, one word will, will uh, generate the uh, X results. And if you're in a different location, that same word will generate Y results based on geography, based on search um, relevancy in that particular part of the world. There's a lot of factors that Google considers. Remember, Google is a, a smart learning artificial intelligence system. So it, it, it knows everything and does all that stuff for us. So the searches do change when you look at devices sometimes, uh, change with location. So it's not always the same results and it always changes but we have to think about the fact that someone will be looking up something on a phone so we make sure that we optimize not only for desktop but also on on the phone as well and you can see the optimization so generally speaking when you do that you have to be careful how you write the words and and do things like that so it doesn't look like you're reading a novel on a cell phone right it's short sweets to the point and it makes sense on a mobile device and it also makes sense on a desktop. It, what you're seeing now is actually the, the dashboard for uh, one of the accounts, uh, Google Ads accounts that um, I manage. So if you take a look at it, and I'll just run through this quickly here because our main purpose today is really to set up a campaign. So that's what I wanna focus on. But the dashboard, has a lot of information you'll see basically it'll give you your total cost of what the campaigns would be and it's all based on a monthly period or a dated period which is very similar to google analytics which runs up here and it'll give you your average cost per click over the the overall campaigns this is for everything we're doing the total cost for the campaign that you've spent in that period of time so far let's say and your optimization score here. Now, the optimization score should be in the high 90s. It should be over 90%, it shouldn't be below 90. If it's in the 80s, then you need to go through it to adjust it. So just let me show you, show you that here in a minute, just so you understand that piece. But let me continue the, the rest of the campaign. You see the draft campaigns are here. You see the biggest changes in terms of spend and by campaign name, and you see um, conversion tracking. We don't have conversion tracking set up here, really. And then you see the campaign spend and all the keywords, what the spend is on keywords, and then the actual breakdown of keywords down here, and bid and signals, which are basically going to give you information like um, the signals that automatically help you uh, make your performance better. And I also pointed out here these question marks along the way, if you notice, when you hover over them, it'll give you the definition of what everything is. So if you get lost somewhere, always check for one of these, and you'll be able to find out more information. Down here below, it has all the searches. And by just by scrolling over a search, you can see how many people click through on that word and how many searches or impressions there are. Okay, so that'll be helpful in you creating ads. 
And then on the bottom here at the very bottom, we'll show you the edge and the breakdown of the edge. So if you see this, this is an edge, and here are extensions, here are the headlines, here's the domain, uh, the path URL rather, and here's a description, okay? And then it'll tell you what the impressions, the clicks are, and the click-through rates are here. And normally it shows you the top ads. So you can scroll through the top ads and see. So we're going from um, 92 clicks, a, a 2.4 CTR to a, a 1 point CTR. Notice the ads are changing here as well. And then we'll go to a 2.8 uh, CTR. Notice the ads are changing as well. And then a 6.8, this is dynamic. So it's changing on a regular basis. Very low impressions, but high clicks. So that's pretty good. Uh, here's another one. This is a pretty good ad too. You can see it's getting good conversion. Very low impressions, but very high conversion. That's pretty good. I like to see that CTR at five points. Uh, here's another one at 2.2 and um, small, small impressions, but good conversion. I like that. Another one at 282, not bad. That's a good CTR. And here's one at three dynamic again. So that's eight. So you can see if you look at all that, we're averaging in, in the, let's call it the high twos. All right. Let's, let's say something like that. High twos, maybe low threes. That's where you want to be. You want to be at a two to 3% conversion uh, CTR click-through rate. Uh, if you get higher, that's great. You want, you normally, you won't see more than a uh, high single digits. You might get into the double digits, low double digits, 10, 15, 18%, that does happen sometimes, but that's pretty, that's respectable. I, I, that's not bad for the account uh, spend. And then we're looking at devices. Notice blue is mobile. So all these are mobile devices. So a lot of our action is happening on mobile, very few on laptop and even TV screens. We have a few impressions on TV there. Then you have your demographics. So if you're the way you would want to understand this would be tying your demographics into what you're seeing in your personas or maybe in your analytics. So let's take a look at that. That's helpful, your networks. This is telling you what your networks are. Obviously Google search is gonna always be the number one. And then here's even your hours and your days on when people are clicking through stuff, okay? So that's all the information that you can use to make your ad better. Now, getting back to this optimization here, Google will tell you what is not optimized and what is. So in this case, we run shopping ads, which are those ads that you see when you, when you shop. So the ads that you see in shopping, the, the products have to be very specific and they have to meet very specific requirements to get posted. And when they don't, they come up with errors. Now you could track all this. We have a hundred and something products out there. So maybe um, a, a percentage of them are not fully vetted to Google. So we have to go back and update that. That's where you see this optimization. So if you click on the view or you can go through this and it'll tell you adding new keywords. In this case, I'm not crazy about adding keywords because the keywords they want to add maybe are not good for me. So uh, I, I'll pass on that, perhaps. Uh, your CPA is basically your cost per action. So they want us to adjust it. Normally they want to adjust it up, right? They're always gonna say you can get better results by spending more money. In this case, it, it's not really, I looked at it already, it's really not gonna move the needle too much. And even with their calculations, it doesn't move the needle too much. And then, um, and then the mobile app. So that's how you can improve your, your optimization score. So if I wanted to just apply all the suggestions, I just hit apply. Or in this case, let's say I wanna view these keywords they're looking at. So I'll go here and take a look at the keywords they're suggesting because maybe they got some keywords that I'm not recognizing. And here's a couple. So this makes sense, right? So that's a good keyword. I can use that. Where to buy Collaborant Chili Peppers, that's a product. Here's another one makes sense. Pastry, pastry, does it make sense? Basic homemade spaghetti sauce doesn't make sense. Even though it's an Italian store, we don't deal with homemade spaghetti sauce. Maybe we can pull people in that do, do homemade spaghetti sauce. So maybe there is an option. So, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll give in, I'll take it. 
Best olive oil, I'll take that. Easy spaghetti sauce from scratch, I'll take that. I'll take that. Recipes, I'll take that. 10 best spaghetti recipe. So you see they have 105 of them. So if you go through that list, you could apply the ones that you like and not apply the ones, and that'll change your optimization score a little bit. Okay, you see mine went up a little bit just by adding those few words. You have to do that on a regular basis. That's the maintenance you need to keep up when you have all your campaigns running. All right, so why don't we build a campaign here? So let me show you some things before we get into the campaign. Okay, um, are you guys seeing this? I'm moving around a little bit. I just wanna make sure you're seeing the screen. You should see a website, Wholesale Italian Food now. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Herut. All right, so this is the website. Uh, this is the company that we're gonna put an ad out. And what do they sell? Well, they sell Italian food and they have a bunch of different products. It's really cool. If you guys want a discount code, let me know. If you wanna spend any money, I'll, I'll save you some bucks. But basically, um, they have this new candy here. Let's go back uh, the splash scene. Let's go to the candy real fast. So they have this new Italian candy they just got in that uh, we wanted to promote. And it's really Italian candy, really unique flavors, goji berry, star anise, bergamot, um, really unique stuff. It's a 130-year-old company. They, they, it's hand-cut, handmade, all out of Italy, let's say, okay? So what I want to do maybe is, is promote this candy, these candies for them uh, on, the, on the ads. So I would pick up this domain here and make sure that we send them to that particular domain. That's the idea, okay? Now, in this case, because I don't wanna go through the process of creating all the new stuff, I'll take them to, uh, just in this example, I'll take them to a product that we already have some stuff set up so you can see what we do to drive conversion. So this is another one of our products. Uh, it's Calabrian chili peppers, really good stuff. If you guys like a little bit of spice, this is a pretty good product. This is a large jar, 33.5 uh, ounces. So I wanna promote this jar because it's almost like a jar you would get in let's say a, a Sam's Club or a Costco or something like that. So that's my target product. I wanna create an ad around this. My goal is to get people to this page to buy it. That's the idea, okay? So if I go to my, just the Google search and I put in wholesale Italian food, I see what comes up. You see here, here's the, the company. That's exactly what we wanna see. Um, let's rotate this. Let's see if we see an ad in here. We see shopping ads. We don't see them up on top but we see them in the organic stuff. And then if we come down, we see the competition has more information about them. I'm just checking out what's around here. See if I see any ads. Nope, it's under rotation. So we don't see anything there. Okay, so I'm just getting a sense of what's out there right now. And then if I put in the actual product to the Calabrian chili peppers, that's the keyword. Okay, you see the competition here. And we see some other things here. Here's a competition, more competition. And because I have software in here, I can come in here and see what they're doing in terms of traffic and the keywords. So I can pick all that information up if I wanted to pull that type of business away. You also see some keywords here and more keywords there. Where to buy, that's important. Um, here's something on Walmart. That's, I believe that should be us. And here's a, uh, an ad for the sister company. Okay, so now I get a sense of what's out there, right? I'm doing some preliminary research. Okay, now let's go back to creating an ad. So the first thing we wanna do is click on this new campaign button. So let's create a new campaign. Now, once we do that, Google is going to ask us, okay, what's your goal? What do we want to do here? Do we want to generate sales? Do we want to generate leads, website traffic? 
Do we want to create, create some product and brand consideration, awareness and reach? Do we have an app to promote? If we're a local store, do we want to promote a local store? Or do we want to create a campaign without guidance? I really use this. Pick one of these buckets. You're probably not going to use an app. You're probably not going to use product and brand consideration. You're, it's probably going to be one of these four here, if I had to guess. In this case, I want website traffic. So I'm going to click on website traffic. Now, the next question that Google wants to know is, what type of ad are we placing? So if you notice, there's a number of ads here that we can place. Of course, video is connected through uh, YouTube, right? So if we have a video, we could do video ads. Shopping ad is what I showed you. Those are the little ads up on top, the little shopping uh, pictures of products. We're doing that already. Display ads are great for retargeting, remarketing. So if someone comes to your website and they come back, uh, they do something else, you could retarget them with a display ad. That's not what we're doing now. What we're doing here is search ads. So we're going to do a text search ad. So we're clicking on that. Now it's asking us to give us the domain where we want to reach. So if you remember, I want to go here to this very specific domain. Notice how long that domain is. We're not going to advertise it that way, but that's where we're going. So I'm going to put that here into this. Let it think a little bit. It does. And then we're going to give it a name. We're going to call this large pepper. Okay. All right. Everything looks good. And now we'll hit continue. I'm going to create a new campaign. You see, I had one there already going. So let's just go and start a new one. Okay. So now we're at the next step. The next step is budget and bidding. Well, budget and bidding is up to you. So that takes me to the, the third thing you need to have ready before you start your ads. The first thing, if you remember, I said you have to have a goal. The second thing, if you remember, I said you should know your, your keywords and, and how you're going to put the ad together. Well, actually, the, the third thing would have been the, the landing page, the link that you're taking them to. And now the fourth thing you need to know before you get started or as you get started is your budget. How much are you going to spend? So in this case, let's spend... Uh, we'll set a small budget. We'll do $5, $5 a day, right? $5 a day times 30 days, $150 a month. That's okay. That's a nice spend. I wouldn't go too too crazy with it because if you remember, I go back to my, my search. And if I go back here, and remember I had that software built in, I can see that the words... Of that product, there's really no searches and no no cost per click coming up. So it's not really there. Now, if I come in here and I take out the brand and I just put the product, see if that changes a little bit. Let's wait for that to populate. I don't know. Oh, here it goes. There, it just populated. So there I see there's 1,300 searches at about 50 cents a piece. So that's 1,300 monthly searches at 50 cents a piece. If we do the math, uh, 1,300 divided by two would be what, 650, right? It's late in the night for me to do math, but 650. So in order for me to capture every single click, I would need to spend 650. I know I'm not gonna get every single click, so I'm spending one fourth of that. That's about right. I'm, I'm comfortable with that number unless I really want to go at it. But then again, I have to look at my cost per action and my conversion rates and all that stuff. If I sell, if I spend $650, how many jars am I going to sell? If the jar is $20, that means I have to set, I have to sell a minimum of 30 jars. If I only make $10 per jar, 10 times 30 is $300. That means I have to sell 60 jars. That means two a day. So I have to do the math to figure out if that makes sense, right? That's really the complicated metrics to it. None of that's important now because I'm not spending that much money. I'm only going to spend $5 a day, which is one fourth of what the cost per click would be out, let's say. Okay, bidding wise, conversion. That's what we're looking for. Uh, we could set a, uh, a cost per action in this case. Probably not because we want to maximize conversions. Let Google do its work. And remember, if you get stuck anywhere, just go ahead and click on this question mark and it'll help you make a decision. All right, so 
that looks good. We're spending $5. We're getting maximized conversions. And now we're moving on to the next step. We click. Oh, you know what? Actually, well, before we do that, let me click on um, more settings just to show you here. If you wanted to, you can actually rotate the ads with specific timings and look at different conversions. When you're setting up ads for the first go around, even the second, third go around, just leave that away. It's automatic. You can pass it, but you can go in and edit some of that if you wanted to. So in this case, I'm happy with it. I'm going to move on to the next step. So the next step would be picking a place to put this. Um, search network, we know what that is. It's showing on search and all the search partners. I like that display network. This is a text ad. I don't need display network right now. So we're going to pass by that. Google will tell you, don't miss the opportunity. If you're running this ad for the first time, for the first couple of runs, you don't need display ad. I would argue that display network is not as valuable as search network. So I would put all my money into that because you'll get better return on your investment. That's what I generally do. But everyone has different opinions on things. Okay. The next part here is location. So where are you located? Where do you want to sell the product? Where, More importantly, where is your target market located? Because you want to sell to someone that's out there. So where are they, right? You know the who, now you know the where. Where are they? So we are a, uh, a company. We're based in Florida, but we sell coast to coast throughout the U.S. So all countries and all territories is not where we want to be. We don't ship to Canada, so you know that's out of the question. And the U.S. seems to be the, the, the best location. Now, if I was local, I could come in here and I could put a, another location and I could come in here and put a specific zip code, let's say. And if you notice when you punch in the zip code, whoop, what happened to my screen here? Hold on a second. Okay, that the uh, menu ball got in the way. When I punch in the screen, the zip code rather, you'll see that it'll come up. Okay, this is a, a neighborhood here in South Florida. So I can just target this. Or if I wanted to, maybe I'm in Miami and people drive all over from Miami, I can come in here and do all of Miami. So I can target that specific area. There's a little difference here. DMA is the, um, the Nielsen market uh, data. That's a, a larger screen. If you notice, they're counting Miami and Fort Lauderdale. That's sort of the, the market area. And it's a larger group. Miami is more of the Google ads area, let's say, which is important to know too. And, and I'll tell you a, a best practice tip. This is interesting. A lot of people don't know this, but Google has a a mapping system. We, maybe we've seen that Google mapping thing running around the neighborhood and they have these, they have these zones set up, Google does. And their zone could be different than what you think it is based on zip codes. So sometimes let's say if you're a local business and you're, you know people drive 20 miles to get to your local business and you put in those three or four zip codes, well, if you don't go to Google Maps and check out what three or four zip codes are included uh, in, in that mapping area, you could be missing your store. So what I mean by that is Google Maps will say zip code one, two, three, and four is this. But you who grew up in a neighborhood know zip codes one, two, and three, four is that. Sometimes the this and the that don't match. So before you go ahead and geographically target an area, my suggestion would be to go into Google Maps and see what they say it is and pull in the zip codes from that particular area. The reason why I know that is because I worked with a local business here and we weren't getting the results and it took me half a day to figure out what was going on. And then by accident, I stumbled upon Google Maps and I said, well, wait a second, they're not including the street that this guy's business is on, but yet it's, it's since the beginning of, of, of dawn, it's been there. So in real life, it's actually in that zip code, but on Google Maps, it's not. So that was an interesting learning. So that would be a best practice for your local company. Keep that in mind. Take a look at that. All right. So in this case, we're doing the US, right? Or I can do different states. Let's say my Google Analytics tells me I have no business in Chicago. I can focus in only on Chicago, depending upon where I am. 
So that's what you would do there. In this case, let's do all the US. Languages, well, we want it English. If you're in a different language, you put a different language in there as well. And the next section would be your more settings. Here is where you would change the start date and the end date. I always like to have an end date in all my campaigns. Um, I normally go four to six weeks out. So you would select a particular date here. So in this case, if I started today, I'll run it, let's say until that Monday. So now I'm out four weeks. That's good. I like that. And let's go ahead and check out the other settings. Do I want to uh, change anything else there? No. But now let's go to audience. So audiences will be where you would sort of target the who and the, and the where they are, let's say. So if you notice, I could do a couple of things. I can come in here and pick what they chose for me already based on other ads. So these are the audiences that I used on other ads. So it's pulling me in there as well. Or I can come in here and just search something. Let's say Italian food, right? And let's search it and see who comes up. So now they're giving me some ideas. Food and dining, yes. Cooking enthusiasts, yes. Foodies, yes. Vegetarians and vegans, yes. This happens to be a vegetarian product, by the way. So that's a perfect idea. Um, restaurant delivery and takeout, no. Fast food, no. Food, yes. Baked goods, no. Pizza, yes. These Calabrian peppers are incredible on pizza, by the way. Uh, toddler meals. No, I don't see a toddler eating this stuff. That would be a pretty interesting scenario. Dairy and eggs. No grocery delivery, possibly gift basket. Certainly. So you see, we go down a list and we're getting our, our, our target audience is getting built out here. Website visitors. Do I want all website visitors that visited my website? Yes. Okay. So let's see, similar to all visitors, AdWords, let's do yes, and optimize list, yes. That's all the ads that we ran before. So we're tying in all that information. Okay, so that's one way to sort of build out your audience. We can also go and take a look at browse. And when we do that, it'll give us a breakdown, who they are, what interests they are, why, um, what are they actively searching for? How do they interact with my business? What is the combined audience if we have one already built, let's say? So let's go to um, who they are. I don't think it matters uh, if it matters if they're married, parents, education. None of this matters to me. Employment no, it doesn't really matter to this product. What interests and, ha and habits they have or hobbies. You see we have food and dining. If I drop down, there could be some other things here, which we've got clicked out already. So that looks good. Are there anything else in here? Lifestyles, hobbies, shoppers, maybe shoppers. Let's look at um, value shoppers. How about that? And I don't see anything else here that makes sense. So we'll move on. So let's get out of that. And let's see, uh, what are they looking for? Planning, let's see if anything makes sense here. We already got food, gifts and occasions. Nope, we're good there. So everything looks good. So now we go through that list and we're pretty good. We're looking for the observation, which is sort of giving them an idea of what they're seeing. So that makes sense for us through Google. And now we hit the scheduling. Do we want it to run all day? Or do we want it to run nine to five? Let's say you're a business that's not open on Sunday. Make it only run Monday through Saturday, maybe, or let's say you're only open for lunch. Well, do you run it for from 7 a.m. to 12 a.m. or 12 p.m.? Or do you run it in the evening to remind people to come for lunch the next day? Or maybe you do two separate campaigns, one for the morning and one for the night, and you see which one gets better results. You could think of it like that, too. Okay, so that's really the setup of this section. Now, everything looks good. I'll give it a quick check and I'll hit next and we get to the next step. Before we, we end the session, this next step is where you would add your keywords. And if you notice that getting keywords are ready from the link I gave them and they're pulling in keywords from that, that link. Now, Remember I told you one of the things you need to have before you start this process is your keywords. 
So have you done the research and you have your keyword list? All you need to do is come in and paste them. So in this case, let's say my research was done and, and you know, I pulled it up earlier. So now I have some keywords. I'm going to go down to this little keyword list right here. Give me a second while I find it. Do, do, do. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to copy it. I'm going to have to do some cleanup here in a minute. And I'm going to just paste that right in here like this. Okay. So let's clean this up. Okay, so now I've got some additional keywords. It's possible that it's duplicative, but let's see. I don't know. Maybe Google will tell us that. But see, now I added some keywords in there. So now I have their suggestion plus the ones that I want. Now, here's something to think about here. And there's pluses and minuses. There's different difference of opinions on this. I And I try to do two different things. There is a, uh, a school of thought when you think about keywords is that you put every single keyword that you possibly could think of in an ad. That's one way of thinking about it. That means you you sort of, you have this big net, you're trying to catch all the fish in it. So that's good. There's another school of thought where you create very specific keyword ads. I've, just, I've done them both ways and I've got good results both ways. So I don't lead one way or the other. It depends for me on the budget, on the product, on the brand awareness. There's a lot of things that I factor in to make that decision. So what does that mean? In this case, you notice I have a bunch of keywords in here. They all focus more or less around the product, the type of product it is. But maybe I want to be very specific with this ad and just focus in on this particular brand and a couple of the words around the brand. So now I have maybe four or five keywords in there. Sometimes somebody uses one keyword and they, they do an ad that way. So there's different ways of doing this. Again, remember, I really believe there's no right or wrong. There's best practices and, and there's ways that you have to do things based on the, the rules and regulations and conditions and policies and all that stuff. The only way you know if you're doing it, if, it's, if you're doing it well, and there are things that work or things that don't work too well is your return on investment, right? If you spend too much money and you don't get return, then you got to fix it and you got to move on. You got to, you got to make it better. So that's the testing piece of it. Okay.